Uh, dear colleagues, uh, this is in fact uh, the last summit, uh, the last uh, meeting of the European Council uh, before the elections, and it's a good moment, I think, to make an assessment of the last five years, what has been done and uh, what uh, we didn't do and what is the result of our policies. Uh, let's first of all say that we, we got the last five years, Mr. Barroso, a very dramatic period. Uh, we got the fallout of the financial crisis of 2008. We got the sovereign debt crisis of, uh, uh, that started in, in Greece in December 2009. Uh, we got the, uh, in our neighborhood the Arab Spring, um, an important, uh, an, an important events. We, we got with our American friends uh, a spying affair that is still uh, going on and in which we have uh, to make uh, the fastest as possible new legislation. And, and we have now the deep crisis uh, in, the, uh, in, in Crimea uh, who remember us all the, the old uh, tensions of the Cold War. So it has been a, a turbulent, let's say, a period the last uh, five years. And I think also we have to be honest that a number of things have been done uh, since 2008, since the financial crisis. Uh, a huge new uh, financial regulation uh, based on initiatives of Commission Barnier uh, have been put forward. We have directives now on bank recovery and resolution. We have a directive on the deposit guarantee schemes. We have uh, a directive on markets in financial instruments. We have a directive on markets abuse. We have um, regulation on credit uh, rating agencies, uh, on capital requirements. So a lot has been done on financial regulation. Like a lot has been done also thanks to uh, uh, our colleague uh, Commissioner Rehn, uh, to the rules of the Growth and Stability Pact. Finally, they are applied. That was not always the case uh, in the past. And uh, last element, we have also got, I think, positive action by the European Central Bank. Because, let's be honest, it's because of the OMT of Mr. Draghi, uh, that the tensions in the markets have uh, fallen down and uh, that, uh, uh, unfortunately, the, the, the tension and the pressure on the politicians has also fallen down uh, to make the necessary uh, reforms. But that said, I think it's also necessary to tell the truth to the people and the citizens in Europe. The crisis is not over. It's not because the end of the, uh, the, end of the recession is there, that we have now entered in a period of growth. We are, have entered in a period of what we can call yeah, more or less economic stagnation, a growth between 0 and 2 percent. That is growth, but not enough to lower the enormous unemployment figures that we know in Europe. And why? Because I think we lack two elements. And, and uh, it was interesting that Hannah Svoboda gave the comparison between the U.S. and the European results. Why the difference? Because, first of all, they have solved their banking problem. And we are still in the middle of a banking crisis. We have still not created a system that is capable to transfer the money from the banks to the real economy. That's the problem. A, a small and medium company in Greece, for example, is still facing with 7, 8, 9, 10 percent of interest rates for doing investments. The same for a small company in Italy. We shall not recover if we don't, first of all, create a banking union. And I'm, not, I'm doubtful about the outcome of the trilogue of today if I see uh, what the Council and ECOFIN yesterday has decided. If they have decided something, because that's not uh, very clear. And the second thing what we need is a European uh, convergence policy. We need a new economic strategy. The Lisbon agenda failed, the 2020 agenda failed. Why? Because it was not binding enough. If you have one currency, you know you need also more convergence and more binding economic strategies between uh, the different parts of your union. And then my, my last point, and it's uh, totally different, uh, I think also uh, that uh, these last five years, uh, Mr. President, we have seen a lack of unity in our, in our foreign policy, and we see it today again, I think, uh, in the crisis around Ukraine and in the, uh, in the Crimea. A outrageous lack of courage of the European Union, because it's our neighborhood. Uh, we are talking about Ukraine, what is uh, in fact a European uh, country. When you go to Odessa, when you go to Kiev, you see that you are in the middle of Europe. And what we are doing, what is our attitude towards 
uh, what is happening, the tragedy of what is happening in the Crimea, well, there is no serious strategy at all. And we need one. We need one based, in my uh, opinion, on a number of elements. First of all, a real common energy policy, and Graham Watson have indicated it, we need binding targets. It's the only way to have a real common energy policy. We need also to launch real sanctions against Russia, against the dirty money that is coming from Russia and that is invested in German industry, in the city of London, in real estate in France. We need real sanctions. Otherwise, otherwise it's an, oh, it, the case is over. It becomes a new frozen conflict, the Crimea, for years and for, for decades. So let us be clear, we have to do with a European leadership, or a Russian leadership, that has turned its back to the consensus following the Cold War. This is not longer the Russian leadership of uh, uh, 1990 uh, and in the years after that. This is a Russian leadership that is prepared, is not longer prepared to accept the integrity of its former parts. And it started, as we know, in 2008 in, in Georgia. And it's continuing now in the Crimea. And the only way to stop it, that is to be bold, to be courageous with the European Union and to do what is necessary. Thank you, President.